Hi guys, this is a demonstration of the analogous color still life we're going to do. And so let me take you in uh, a word on the still life. I have the three objects of uh, one is green, yellow, and red. And like we said, you could this could be a cucumber, this could be a banana, that could be a carrot or an apple if you wanted. But the idea is to set it up. I've, what I've done here is put it on a pile of books and a sheet of white, just regular paper. Because so that from my perspective, and as, we, as I paint, you're not going to be able to see what I'm seeing here, but this is kind of my, the angle of what I'm seeing, is I want to be able, I want the, you, you could either have, place it so that you have put one uh, fruit or vegetable in front of the other, or at least you're putting them in front of the shadow of something else, okay? So then that way, it really highlights, it brings out, the fruit there. So this is about composition. And as you see, as I make the sketch in my the art process journal, you'll see how important composition is. I've also lifted it up on the books so that the you get an edge here. See the edge of that paper, how it cuts across? That's an example of movement, right? So I'm going to have that line cutting across and bringing the eye in towards these fruit here. So this is a composition that you don't that you want to set up beforehand. The other point is that you want it to be next to a, uh, a source of light. So right now, the window to my left is bringing light in here and giving me shadows on the right side. Uh, I can also, I have a lamp here I could put on to really emphasize those shadows. And um, if you have a lamp, this is, called, this is an ideal lighting right here. Uh, I'm not going to use this lighting because... Uh, some of you may not have this lamp. Um, if you can, I'll just pull back here. So it can be just a regular table lamp, uh, some sort of a lamp that is directional. Um, and you can just set it up to the left of your still life so that you, you get the highlights coming on one side of your shapes and sh the, the, the cast shadows on the other side. So like I said, I'm not going to put the lamp on just so that it's kind of more of a regular. Uh, preferably use a lamp. Um, but I'm going to do it without the lamps because I'm assuming that some of you may not have that uh, uh, access to a lamp, like to any lamp. Uh, so, okay, so as long as it's next to a window will work. Now, a word about our analogous, the idea of an analogous painting. So the analogous painting is, this is different from um, using complementary colors to shade. So... As you, this is a uh, um, color wheel, color pizza, as I like to call it. And you'll notice that the darkest area is down here and the lightest area is there at the top, right? These are the, the three um, primary colors. Uh, and what happens is that with uh, analogous colors, is analogous means the colors to the left and to the right of any co color you're, we're talking about. So for if I'm making a lemon using the yellow, I'm going to be looking left and right for my um, to create my shadows and my highlights. Uh, same thing if it's a red. So let, red, let's start with the red as an example. I will pick the, the, uh, the colors next to it to create my lights and my darks. So for my darks, I'll, I'll go into the purples, uh, which is really blue added to the, the, the red. And for my lights, I'll go towards the oranges, which is really yellow mixed in with the red there. Same thing with the blue. If I want to get a lighter blue, or rather green, because I'll, I'll go into the yellows. If I want to make a darker, I'll go into the blues. Okay? So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, and so we're not, we're not creating our shadows with, the, with, uh, with either black or white, or with the complementary, but we're making our shadows with the analogous, the color that's next to the color on the, um, on the color wheel. Okay, here's a, here's a way to start, and I want all of us to do this. No pencils, okay? We're just going to go straight in with color, and this is to free you up, right? That, uh, so the trick is, start with yellow, because yellow is your brightest, and you can make many mistakes. So I'm looking, you can't see it now, because um, the, the camera needs to be looking straight down, but I'm going to um, create my composition, right? So... I'm seeing that there's this line across there, the edge of that paper, as I mentioned. And let me, let me uh, 
Let me start to. I'm going to make, mix up a little bit of a wet um, yellow here, so it's it's pretty dilute. And let me just start to set up what I. So I've got my my shimla milch, my paprika or bell pepper, and it's kind of like a, a tube, right? It's kind of like a a um, uh, um, uh, so it's got the the um, those two sides, and then it's got this this end here with with its, it's got a little indentation there. And I think I'm going to kind of place it there. It's sort of pointing in that direction to give it a little bit of perspective. And then in front of it, so there's a bit of a shadow that I'm seeing here. And I've placed, from my perspective, I, I've placed my lemon kind of right there in front of the shadow. So the lemon is over, um, is crossing over into the shadow to create a nice contrast. And then I've got this, uh, let's see, the my... Tomato, or right over there. So I could go in f further and kind of make these bigger. Um, I wonder if I should, in fact. So here's the thing: you made you you have your first level layer of uh, what you think you want to your your composition is, and when you realize, oh, I need to adjust that a little bit, what you do is you go in and you pick up. Uh, I put a little bit of of this um, kind of a more of a brownish. And I've, uh, I, I, it's a, a yellow ochre, in fact. So it's a, kind of a darker version of yellow. And I'm going to go in and kind of adjust, but using the darker color. Now what will happen is your darker color is going to show. In fact, I might even, I even created a little bit of a brown, like if you have that. Or you can use even a, mix a little bit of a blue into your yellow. But every time you need to adjust, just go for a slightly darker value color. And the yellow that, that you kind of made a mistake on is, will just disappear. Right? That's, the, that's the way you sketch using paints. Is you start off really light value and then kind of go in for your... your you don't have to do it if you've not made a mistake. But if you want to adjust, change things a little bit. Like I'm going to make this lemon a little bit bigger, a little bit kind of longer. Um, then the darker is what jumps out and the eye kind of completely misses and I'm going to adjust this edge here so it's not just this, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the form. Uh, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to go in there, kind of give it these funny kind of round, round edges there and it's got this really strong kind of piece there. All right, so I've done here kind of a really simple outline. Oh, this has got a bit of a, my tomato has still a bit of that, um, the, the stem in it. And I want to also, of course, get my, sh my cast shadows in. All right, so kind of like that, and kind of coming out like that. Notice that the, the cast shadows are there, they create this, this, um, the chance to highlight my object there. All right, I've got my sketch down, right? And you can do that um, fairly quickly. Now, the next thing I want to do is go in with my, wait, whoops, sorry, is start with, I'm gonna start with the, the tomato here, okay? So let me begin, I've, I've what I've put onto my palette here is the two kinds of red. This one is called Scarlet Lake, which is a warmer red, and one is called Crimson Lake, which is a cooler red. Uh, so anything, when you hear the word crimson, it's the cooler version of the red. It means it's got, it's got a little bit more blue in it, whereas the Scarlet Lake has a little bit more of the yellow in it to make it a little bit warmer. Another word for this would be um, cadmium red, typically. Uh, that you might have that in your set, or scarlet crimson would be the cooler. So that word crimson makes you think of cooler, and the other would be the warmer. Okay, and let me start with the, uh, let me just pull up a bunch of color here, and I'm going to mix a little bit of this yellow in. Now, so with red, as we said, if you want to get lighter with an, with an analogous color painting, you go 
um, towards the orange side. So you'd mix a little bit of the yellows in. And if you want to go darker, you mix a little bit of the blue in, and that takes you down that way on the color wheel. So let me start. There's three things. When you paint an object, you want th basically three, uh, sh three values. Okay? You want the, a, a medium value, you want a highlight, and you want a shade. Let me take you back to the still life. The medium value, it's also called um, the local color, is literally, it will be the color that is, that, that um, if, when light falls naturally on an object, when it's, uh, you'll get this, this kind of orangish red here. It will be kind of like a, a warmish red. Your, your shade will be, of course, this part over here where it's in a shadow, so it, it, it darkens. And then your highlight, of course, is typically this little, these two little um, uh, dots here of really bright color. So um, you, you might also have, um, so generally you've got your medium color, your, your, what's called your local color, your shadow, and your highlight. And the highlight might be really intense like that. Or in the case of this lemon, it might be kind of like a flatter color here. So here, the, the local color is this part here, around this part. The shade is down here. And then your highlight is kind of the sort of a uh, area over there, okay? And uh, you could do that with the same thing with your the, the paprika here. So the 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 local color is prob you know these areas here, which are um, where the color the light falls naturally normally. Of course, there's a lot of sh of shade in here, and then your highlights are these pretty light areas. They're still they're not white. They're kind of a light green. Um, so anyway, those are, think always in terms of those three basic uh, values. You could even call up dark, medium, light. And then everything in between is achieved by blending. So let's start with this tomato. And I'm going to go in and now my... My yellow, I, I put a quite a thick amount of yellow there, which is a problem. That's why if you, the idea is when you use a dilute um, yellow with, with mix, a lot of water mixed in with that, then you can, you get your sketch and it dries super fast. But um, it's okay uh, that we have extra yellow there because I'm actually going to use it as, going to mix it in as part of my trying to get the local color. And to get the local color often, one way to do it is you mix your color on your palette. Okay, I'm going to. And I think I need to go a little bit lighter here. You mix up your the color that you think is the local color or the regular kind of me, medium range of your color. And then what you can do is you can literally pick it up and hold it right against the actual object. So if I, if I hold it against the shadow here, you can see the contrast, right? It's just way too bright. But if I hold it against the actual the, the area, which is this part on the other side of the of the stem and you'll see that it kind of just disappears and that tells me okay that's the right color that's what I want and so I was pretty lucky first try um, I got it uh, but if you need to adjust you can always just come back to your palette and mix in um, whatever you need to try to get to there and sometimes it takes some quite a bit of experimenting to get to that to to get the right color but that's part of this, the joy of, of, of painting, is that you just, it's like you keep, it's like making soup. You keep adding a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and until it tastes just right. All right, so let me go in and pretty much most of this area here, and I'm, I'm working very, um, I'd, I'll call it with blocky, right? I'm not doing, I'm not thinking at all about any blending. I'm just kind of putting down blocks of color. And because part of partly because it's just fun to work fast, and part of it is that the um, you're you're actually going to you you want to put down your blocks of color first, and you might even just leave it as blocks of color because it can, kind of looks really cool sometimes. But you can then, if you want, go in a second time and really blend things in. Okay, I've got my main my local color here, and um, I'm there's a bit on this side here actually. And once I've got this down, I'm going to go in with the a darker version, right? For my, my shadow is over here. And so this is how I'm going to do it. I will take whatever mixture I had here, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue. Remember on the color pizza, 
we go the, the, the next analogous color to the next uh, towards the darker side will be purple. So let me mix a little bit of this blue inside and see what happens. Ah, interesting. So you always get a little bit surprised. This is sort of a these are the two blues that I had in my set, and one is cobalt blue hue, the lighter one, the other is Prussian blue. If you have ultramarine marine blue, that is the best. Ultramarine blue. But these will do. So I'm taping up the lighter one of the blues because I don't need to get, make it get too dark too fast. And let me go in and I see uh, this over here. Yeah, let me just get that edge. Get nice. So I'm, I'm going to use, I'm using a flat brush and a, a flat brush is really helpful if you hold it flat. You can just really get a very smooth, crisp edge really super quickly. Okay, so I'm just going down there and let me see. Up. And there's a, quite a bit of, I'm going to pick up some more of this and make it even darker because I see a pretty dark part right in here. And let me, I can work, work fast on purpose, okay, because it'll both, you won't get stuck and you'll end up with a painting that actually looks really quite quite um, spontaneous and loose. A lot of the biggest problem I, I find that I have as an artist, and I think most or many of you, is that we get too tight really, really fast. We get too, we're perfectionists. And the beautiful thing about painting is that you can just kind of, if you let yourself get really loose with your pa painting, you end up with something that's really beautiful and actually, um, and it's fun to do. Okay, so I've gone in here, um, I'm, I've, I've put in some of the dark, and let me see, I want to actually get some, get a really nice dark line across the bottom here. Let me put some much, so I'm actually even starting to look blue, right? My color is starting to turn blue, but that is totally okay because uh, as an analogous color, the blues are the where your darkest will end up being. Okay, and let me add a little bit of a dark part up here because I can see this can is, is much darker. And let us now look at the highlights, right? So we're moving pretty fast here. Um, so the highlights for the lighter version of the, the red, I'm going to go up into the orange, right? Or even towards the yellow if I want to get the super, super bright highlight. So let me start, let me... I clean my brush because when we mix colors, if we still have color from a previous mixture, it just throws everything off. And I've got my yellow here. This is the original kind of red that I was working with, the warm red. This is the cool red. In fact, I should go in with some of that cool red that'll for the in the shadow. Okay, so I'm going to mix up a good amount of this lighter and go in with some parts here. Now, you already have paint on the, the canvas, so you're going to have to um, kind of hold your f f brush quite flat to be able to layer it on top of the paint that's already there because it's not fully dried yet. Once it dries, then you can really um, go in without any worries, but because it's still a little bit wet, once you start adding color, it, um, it, gets, it, it, it mixes in too much. Uh, let me get a nice curve there and here's the thing I'm seeing there's some highlight this is ref reflected light coming from the white surface around here down here right so I'm going to add that and um, let's see what else we've got some more a little bit more of a reflected light coming even on this side here let me add a little bit of that in and, and then on the edge there those. Now I'm going to start looking at the places that where the highlights are really super bright. Let me take some more. Let me take some pure yellow now and go in and just place this yellow right about here. This is where those where these two big dots of reflection from the window. Okay, 
and there's a little bit over here the last part I want to do is go in for my the um, paint the the stem of this dried tomato or the, the dried stem of the tomato again I'm going and pulling up some of this blue here because that's my taking me into the purple which is the darkest part let me pick up some of this cooler red oh wow look at that it turns it different kind of a purple but so here I've got a cooler version of the purple I'm just gonna go in here and create some of these this feeling of there being a stem here all right and again really super loose I'm not too worried about it looking exactly like it should what I'm gonna do is that this this because I use the cooler red the 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 scarlet lake or the rather the crimson lake remember crimson is the color that is the word that tells you it's kind of a cooler I'm gonna it's actually it's a bluer purple so I'm gonna take this bluer purple and run it down the side here because it actually looks really nice. I'm going to even mix a little bit more of that blue in there and see what happens. Make it really cool, all the, feel really cool all the way down this side here and down under here. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but it, there's, it's almost looking, there's a, the blue is almost sh kind of showing through, which is really, really pretty. Okay, so as you can see, it's really rough again blocks think of your color as blocks of color but um, I like that it's loose right now let me go that that's I could go in there and really start to rework it and refine it but I'm gonna keep that there as it is instead I'm gonna um, you know what I'm, one thing I do um, is bothering me a little bit is that it's a little bit too orangish and the the the, um, the tomato I'm seeing is pretty red parts of it Tomatoes are kind of all kinds of different colors, but I'm going to go in and add some parts that of the red that I do see um, uh, as it goes into here. And then this is too bright here. That's the other problem I realized. So let me just go in here with a little bit of a darker. So you're looking at color, but you are definitely looking at your that, that value, which parts are light, which parts are dark. And and I do I do need I realize the reflected light we do need quite a bit of reflected light down here. Yeah. All right, so that's why I pick up that and going into that side there. All right, folks, I think we let's uh, move on to our next our next. Object is going to be the lem uh, the um, let's go with the lemon right so here lemon the thing about the lemon in an analogous color is that your local color being the 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 yellow on the color wheel is the your lightest color there so we're going to still use this as our local and we're going to go to the left side to the green side for our shadow because it's it's shadows are often cooler right and this going that way around the wheel would make it warmer but we want our shadow to feel feel cooler so let's begin with um, just putting in blocking in the yellow for uh, the highlight and you could always cheat and at the end just add a little bit of white to get that the true highlight but technically that is um, cheating because this is as an analogous color drawing this your yellows are going to be the highlights in all your objects because that's they're the highest value in the color wheel okay so I blocked in the yellow there and let me pick up a little bit of I could I could pick up some green let's just try that I could mix in the blue there to make it um, to get my green but just for the sake of seeing what will happen let me actually pick up this the green and that's where I'm gonna start making my my, my shades Okay, so that green is going to come around this side, um, and um, the light's coming in from this direction. So, as a sphere, you've kind of got this amount of green here. It's it. I'm just giving you an idea. When you do it yourselves, it'll be all observation. Because I'm looking at the while I'm making this, I'm just I'm actually looking at the lemon, which you guys unfortunately can't see. But um, um, let me go and bring in the 
the corner here um, and block these things all right and I could and I'm gonna put a little bit of green right underneath but I need to come in with the reflected light so reflected light as we keep saying is for analogous painting is yellow so there we go it's it's really rough which is kind of the idea and let me go in with this I'm going to add a little bit of blue to make it a kind of a really bluish green and this is where that little seed, seed is let me add a little bit of a darker value over here because that's furthest from the light maybe I'm going to smoothen out this this too too the edge was too strong that sudden change and let me smoothen out the edges of the of that, that so that there's it's not as hard a, a dark as it looked okay so there you go super fast and I've got my lemon and then I'm gonna the third part is the paprika okay here this is a uh, um, let me just go in with this green that I had already put in I want the low it's this is actually too dark for let me add some more onto the palette because that paprika that bell pepper is pretty big so and I'm, it's it's very, pretty dark so I'm going to pick up some of the yellow and lighten it the last one thing that I may have you may have heard me say earlier is that the that acrylics dry when they dry they go slightly darker in value than what they look like when the paint was wet as and so it never hurts to mix something slightly lighter than it actually is because that will because you'll end up uh, it, chances of it becoming ending up with the um, with the right color are higher okay so I am basically this is the 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 end of of your paprika where a lot of light is hitting it and so I'm just going to go in and get these kind of block out these parts of the paprika that I see are the local color right the, the regular color the medium and once I've got that blocked in then I'll start working on the the highlights and the shadows and I've got some up here so the light is coming from that direction so there is you can see some of these medium value or the what as we say the local color up here as well all right let me and then actually the 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 reflected light here is almost the same value as that um, as the, the so even though this is in shadow because it's light that's being reflected it's about the same value as the regular local color here and we've got some more some kind of a good amount here I'm going to work pretty fast and it's not going to be totally accurate but it's going to just give us an idea of of what a Shimla Mirch looks like all right now let me go and pick up some of the blue okay I'm going to still use this the same kind of cobalt blue and um, let me now my let me put it mix it in over here okay so this was my base color this is my my local color and I'm gonna I'm using this as the basis for deciding with how to go lighter or how to go darker right I'm not going to go to the original uh, the paint that came out of the tube because that was too dark um, but I'm using an, the analogous color to the, the darker side of green which is down towards the uh, blue on the color wheel and let's see what we come up with we have this here and let me start putting that in so you can see that there is a change oh I need to do I need to mix up a little bit more of this green remember it was the original green plus a little bit of yellow to lighten it and even though the blue I'm mixing in is quite a bright light blue it still darkens the ok 
Okay, I'm going to get that there. This is the... Bring it all the way over here. So this is the joy of painting is that you're you're looking at what is actually there. So as I'm painting here, I'm looking at that fruit. I need to get a little bit darker. So let me pick up some of this darker blue, right? Because the 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 object in front of me gets actually really dark, especially around this corner, which is in the shadow. All right, and then there's uh, right underneath here gets really dark as well, and there are parts inside here which fall kind of come under because this is protruding out the top here that gets pretty dark in there, and this gets some darkness in there, and you can have a line here again where this piece is there's an underside to this piece of the paprika. Great guys, I I am getting. I don't want to do too much detail, but I do want to do enough that you guys can see how using the th um, thinking in terms of three different values, the dark, the medium, the shadow, the, the low color and the highlight, or the dark, medium and light, helps start to define uh, an object three-dimensionally. Okay. And... Let's see, there's some of this local color, the regular green, it goes inside here. Um, so I've, these are my, I've got my, my medium and my, some of my dark here. Let me just actually pull this through here. And then what I've left is the highlights. Now you might be working with a um, with a um, kira, a cucumber. So your colors, are, your values are going to be totally different. So this paprika is pretty dark, the green. But your so it all depends on what what fruit you or vegetable you end up picking. And let me go in a little bit with a, a medium here. This is kind of a medium. And what's down here? Let me pack that in there. All right. So again, we're working fast. We're working